heartfelt feelings about the future of the planet, as young people demonstrated last summer, are at the top of the agenda. I will use my own bottles, so I hardly use reusable plastic anymore. Changing habits like recycling, like walking and everything, it all adds up. I think it comes down to government making changes in law so that it's not a struggle for everyone to be more sustainable. Concern about plastic waste is one of the biggest issues for campaigners and now businesses including nightclubs and bars are beginning to hear their concerns. So, how can all London's 100 plus grassroots music venues be persuaded to ditch single-use plastic? I'm meeting two young promoters, Hardy and Billy, from Tell and Twist who've been attempting just that. We were running club nights for about a year, year and a half before we sort of got to the point where we decided we were in a position that we could make a proper, a proper difference. They devised and funded their own eco-friendly metal containers to hand out as party goers arrived at their gigs. Okay, so it is all about these metal cups. Yeah. As you arrive into the club night, this gets put around your neck like that, and you pay two pound in, in your ticket price, which is a deposit, and at the end of the night, you can either loop it off, return it, and get your two pounds back, or you can take it home and continue reusing it. By having a harness in which you can keep it on you whilst being able to dance. And nobody really wants to dance with a cup in the hand, you can use it throughout the night, which is the whole idea of beating single use, is by it being reusable. Hardy and Billy's mission is to convert as many venues in London as possible to single use plastic free, including the CLF Arts Cafe at the Bussy Building in Peckham where they're planning to host a plastic-free event in six weeks. On an average night here at the Bussy building, they get through thousands of plastic cups. At the end of the night, when all of the businesses have closed up shop and you go around to the, uh, the bin section at the back, just seeing like plastic falling out of um, all the bins because the sheer amount of it. So just, to, just thinking about little changes you can make here and there to the business to help, um, to help reduce our waste and carbon footprint. Billy and Hardy are meeting Connor, the manager, to decide whether their metal cups or compostable cornstarch cups are the best option for the event. Because it's made of cornstarch, that doesn't mean you can just throw it in a river and it will dissolve. Uh, it's basically a new form of plastic, it is plant-based, but unless it goes in the correct composting facility, it won't break down and it won't turn into compost. As promoters, Tail and Twist have already staged one successful dry run last summer with metal cups at an event called the Eco Disco at Oval Space in Bethnal Green. In place tonight, we have straws made from avocado seeds, recyclable canned water, and eco friendly glitter. The success of the Eco Disco spurred them on to try it again as the party crowd quickly adapted to using metal cups. It gives them a sense of ownership. Yep. It is agreed that going with the aluminium option is the right thing for the CLF Arts Cafe. It's great that you guys are, you know, happy to see how this goes. And yeah, 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 I'm on board with it. Over in Bethnal Green, Oval Space has become the trailblazer for the plastic-free movement in London. The venue used to throw away a staggering 60,000 plastic cups every month. These compostable cups are made from cornstarch and they feel nicer than plastic too. And I'm told the beer tastes better as well. We are the first venue in London and in fact the UK as a whole um, to eradicate single-use plastics. Economically there has been a few challenges. We've introduced uh, something called a green tax. So for every, uh, every ticket that we sell for a music event, then that's a one pound fee on top of the ticket. The PLA cup system in Milan worked really well. Milan was the first city to abandon single-use plastic in favour of the compostable cups with help from Italian environmental charity World Rise. We work as consultants in the sense that uh, we, we make a, a plan that allows for them to discard all single-use plastic and officially become plastic-free. We knew that London was a very fertile soil for this kind of initiative, so we're very excited to launch it here. Replacing plastic with cornstarch cups is beginning to take off here in London. Today we're at the v &A Museum and they've invited us to come down and provide the music in the entrance hall as people come in for their v &A Friday late. We're making it more environmentally friendly. 
we decided to supply the compostable cups and they're going to be disposed of through Ogle Space, who have a collection point with First Mile. Getting the cups composted is not easy. It's expensive and the cups have to be sent to Derby. Choosing the best method for replacing single use is up for discussion by the music business. This is Venues Day at Islington Assembly Hall where they bring together the largest and liveliest group of grassroots promoters and managers in the world. These are the venue managers who can decide whether going plastic free is for them. All these things are positive ideas, but the correct solution for each event might be different. So I think there would be a question around the economic um, deliverability of that. A lot of venues will just use the plastic cups and you just drink the, from them and then you throw them away and that's just like, oh, it's just brutal. Yeah, as a venue we're always looking at ways that we can both improve our service and, uh, you know, be very practical about the way we do things. Sounds like a great idea. You should introduce them to us. Billy and Hardy are not just targeting London venues. With Glastonbury having replaced single-use plastic, Today they're meeting the organisers of the Mighty Hoopla Festival for June 2020 in Brockhall Park, a large LGBT festival attracting a crowd of 25,000 thirsty fans. We go to venues where they don't have draft and that's how we sort of do what we do with our cups. The reason that we promote these is because the recycling system caters for these much better. How many of these we're going to have to produce? To, to, can you do the whole event or could you do a part of the event? Well, I think it depends on like what you would think most people are going to buy it. So if you yeah. can get all of your uh, spirit mixers in tins mm -hmm. and you only need to sort out the draft, then all of a sudden you don't need 30,000 votes. We might move away from draft for that really reason. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're, we're super interested uh, to see how it, I think it, it for us, it'd have to, to stack up yeah. to make it work. You know, there's so many options out there to be more sustainable. This is one of many. Having their concept tested by the mighty Hoopla next summer is a major breakthrough for Billy and Hardy. At the Bossy Building in Peckham, Tail and Twist are back with their metal cups. This place is where we sort of made our name, where we started and we're really excited to come back and uh, bring our cups with us. With the night in full swing, the low carbon experiment seems to be working. Do you guys need a cup? And all of Hardy and Billy's dedication, bringing their cups to their events has paid off. <laughs> Tell me, how's it going with the metal cups? Yeah, I think it's really, really cool. It's nice to see that uh, a club night is making a difference with um, what they do, you know, rather than just running any old club night. And it's cool to see that uh, everyone looks really, really fly with their, with their horses on. And uh, yeah, I think it's going well. It's early days in London Clubland's bid to go single-use plastic free. And whatever solution the venues choose to adopt, the will to protect the environment is certainly there.